All right, today we're going to be talking about lateral stabilization on level one vehicles. Uh, inverted vehicles, vehicles on all four wheels, really don't provide uh, a lot of hazard to us from a stabilization perspective. When vehicles are inverted, the only reason we're going to apply struts or anything to the high side of the vehicles is to support those vehicles as we degrade vertical posts. So we start cutting C posts and B posts, the car will continually collapse down and potentially further injure victims or further entrap if we don't capture the load. Outside of that, there's not a lot of need for it. Um, on sideways vehicles, vehicles that come to rest on their side, there is a huge need for stabilization to the high side. There's a lot of different struts on the market. Uh, we're going to focus on the Highway Paratech VSK kit. This is a 26 piece kit, which sounds like a lot of pieces, but I have the whole cache here in front of me. And when you put these pieces together appropriately, they store in a very small area on your rig. They give you four working struts that are gonna, be, gonna give you about six foot of length uh, for your uh, attachment points. You got nice 12 inch base plates that are great load distribution points. Uh, there's a lot of features about these struts that are very unique and very different from all the other struts that you're gonna to apply to a, to a vehicle. So I wanna start by talking about the strut itself uh, and then we'll get into all the parts and pieces that support the strut. So the primary piece of the system is this right here. Paratech struts are designed to work either direction, this way or this way. There is no up or down on them. The inner portion of this Acme thread strut completely separates from the outer portion. Uh, there's an o-ring here and an o-ring up here uh, or gaskets and these two components uh, Serve the purpose of maintaining an airtight seal within the strut The only time that that comes into play is when you are firing these struts into a trench pneumatically uh, For mechanical applications where we're just extending them and turning the collar They don't uh, impact or affect the operability of this strut in any way shape or form uh, You do want to make sure from a maintenance perspective that you keep a little bit of lubricant on those. They are rubber uh, and they will dry rot if you don't take care of them. On the bottom of the strut, you'll notice an air fitting here. This pneumatic fitting, like I said before, is for that uh, trench application or advanced shoring applications. Typically in vehicle stabilization, we're not accessing this. You'll also notice very quickly that there's a load chart on the side of these struts. All the other struts on the market utilize two to one safety factors. Paratech uses a 2 to 1 and a 4 to 1 safety factor. If you look at the design load variance between a Paratech strut and every other strut on the market, your load capacities are radically increased. Okay? They give you a functional load chart that shows you at length with a maximum of two extensions on this, meaning its weakest configuration, what its lowest load capacity is, and what its greatest load capacity is when it's all the way shortened. To give you an example of, of what else is out there, um, the next closest strut and strength has a 16,000 pound load capacity when it's all the way squatted and when it's fully extended you get about a 4,000 pound load capacity. The minimum load capacity that you're going to have on a Paratech strut, uh, it's, it, it, particularly these that we're talking about here with those two extensions, with a 4 to 1 safety factor, meaning we're doubling that safety factor, is about 5,400 pounds. So when you make the safety factors the same, two to one to two to one, we're at about 12,000 pounds all the way squatted, not 4,000 pounds. And when they're uh, completely shortened in their strongest configuration, you're in excess of 20,000 pounds of load capacity per strut. So these are radically stronger. In level one applications, that's not that big of a deal because all of these loads are very manageable. But when we start talking about supporting level two vehicles, uh, cement mixers, dump, truck tr dump trucks, tractor trailers, the number of struts you're going to apply to the load directly correlate to the load you're trying to support. So if I have a 20,000 pound load, uh, I'm using one point of it as a pivot point, I'm assuming that I'm supporting a 10,000 pound load. If my struts can only support 4,000 pounds of capacity, I have to put at least three struts on that load to safely assume it or stabilize it. <clears throat> Uh, theoretically, if you have a Paratech strut, you could put a single strut on it because it's designed to support that much more load capacity. So that's kind of load design on struts in a nutshell. The reason that these are so much stronger is there is no point load within the system. Every strut that requires a pin to go through a hole results in a point load. Point loads automatically diminish the strength of the strut. Also, struts that telescope 
meaning the sections get thinner and thinner and thinner, uh, result in those radical weakenings of load force as they extend. With this strut, there are no pull out and put on parts with the strut itself. When I want this to extend and make contact with the surface, is all I do is manually extend it and then spin the collar down. These Acme grays, uh, Acme threads, thread struts that are grays, have basically two sections of threads on them. This collar contacts all those threads, assumes all that load through the collar, and then transfers all that load down the outer shell of the strut. Where the struts fit into the base plates, top and bottom, there's keeper pins that just keep things connected. The pins themselves don't carry any load. So all this load transfers through solid material. Um, that's basically the engineering theory behind why these struts are so much stronger than everything else that's out there on the market. Um, so that pretty much covers the strut in and of itself. On the side of each gray, you're going to see dimension markings. This is a 37 to 58 inch strut. This tells you when it's all the way stroked down, it's about three feet long or 37 inches. When it's all the stro way stroked out, it's about 58 inches long. In this highway VSK kit, you get two of these longer struts. You get two of these shorter struts, which are 25 to 36 inch struts. And then you get two three foot extensions, two two foot extensions, and two one foot extensions. The rule on grays with extensions is two extensions or a maximum of three feet worth of extensions. That's really the only definitive rule you need to remember about Paratex and how you organize these to help streamline this so that it's easily deployable um, and your personnel aren't going to make any mistakes about those combinations of struts. I encourage end users to pre-configure these if they can. Um, if you combine the two threes with the two long struts, you're going to have a six foot strut assembly. If you combine the twos with the ones and then attach those to the other struts, you're going to have about a six foot strut assembly. So pre-configuring these so that you have four struts ready to go, ready to throw to about six feet of height, gives you four working platforms that will uh, give you all the attachments that you need for all your standard loads. Um, and we'll configure that when we get ready to, to put this in. Uh, another quick note to, to make about making your attachments with their base plates. The traveling into the strut has holes in it. When I attach base plates to this, with this kit, I get four of these multi-purpose or multi-base heads. I want to pull this pin back, let this pin drop onto the strut, and then I need to rotate the head until that pin drops into position into one of those holes. Conversely, if I flip this around and I were to put a base plate on this end, when I throw this multi-base on this end, you can see it's scored all the way around. So I don't have to rotate the head. I can simply pull the pin, drop it on, and it's locked. It's an important piece to remember when you're assembling this to make sure you don't lose a piece or not have a base plate firmly assembled. The 12 inch base plates right here have another unique feature. Most of the base plates on struts offer a single attachment point. Um, if they don't have a single ratchet strap that's integrated into the base plate, they have a modest rigging ring or attachment point that may allow you to put two to it. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of saying at a minimum you need to put two ratchet straps and kind of bisect the angles you create with those ratchet straps with the strut. The reason being, all struts that use a single attachment point, one of the first things we will do in a training application is walk by and kick the bottom of the base plate. If you apply enough lateral load to the bottom of the base plate and you only have a single attachment point, you're going to lose the entire strut. It's going to kick one way or the other. So we try and create that V. The second facet with wanting a large engineered rigging ring on this base plate is load design. Uh, so without getting too heady about this, if I'm vertically supporting a load with a 45 degree angle of a strut, so I walk the strut up to a tanker or a trailer, I throw it at 45 degrees coming into the load, what I am assuming vertically, I am translating laterally at 1.5 times that load, roughly from an engineering perspective. So if I've got 10,000 pound load, I got the strut coming in at 45 degrees, I'm transferring 15,000 pounds laterally. That plays a big key in this facet right here. If I've got 3,300 pound ratchet straps and I'm using those as my connection point, I have to put redundant ratchet straps in, uh, theoretically, until I equate 15,000 pounds. 
That's a lot of ratchet straps and a lot of connection points. So we'll quickly upgrade the chain or we'll double up those ratchets. Additionally, the bottom of this base plate is very aggressive and assumes a lot of friction, which helps reduce the reality of that lateral load. But if you don't have a big application like this that's engineered and designed for multiple connection points, when you get into heavy loads, level two loads, you're gonna get overwhelmed very quickly on your engineering capacities. Okay. Uh, the kit also comes with four ratchet straps. I encourage the end users to buy more ratchet straps because to make those two attachment points per base plate, they're gonna need more than four. Uh, you also get four, four hook clusters, which give you the ability to make accurate uh, or well-engineered attachment points to the vehicle um, and not compromise the ends of your ratchet straps. A quick note to make about deployment on the ratchet straps is pre-assemble your ratchet strap so that the playing end, the end that's gonna come out of the ratchet assembly is preset at about three to four feet. That will accommodate 80% of your attachments. That way when you pull those out, you can simply let the loose coils fall to the ground, rig the ratchet assembly into your base plate, and what you have extended should be very, very close to what you need. Make your connection point, pull the slack through, and then start operating the ratchet assembly. So that pretty much covers the equipment application of what we're gonna do here. Um, and, and we're going to go ahead and take all this stuff, assemble it, and go into the actual application for a lateral vehicle.